everyone, welcome to Wednesday. Um, I wanted to continue on from last week's conversation because a lot of people seem to have been interested in that and kind of like the psychology around eating. Um, so today I wanted to talk about that we all have a food story and understanding our food story is um, super important and kind of you can kind of see your journey with food and where you are with food or are you actually even aware of some of these things. Um, so yeah, let me know, comment below if you've got any questions as I'm going to, and I'm happy to answer those for you as well, as the best I can do. But what I thought I'd do, so I'm coming here, you can see I'm in a motel room down Metfin, I've just completed, um, my certification in level 1 Stotts Pilates, and tomorrow I'm finishing my level 2 Stotts Pilates, which is super exciting, and I did my bar training, so I'm really missing my kids at the moment right now too, but, um, I'll get back on track now. Um, so what I thought I'd actually start, I think this will be over the next couple of weeks, but, but I thought today I'll give you a real um, grounding of my food story so you can kind of understand the journey I've been on. So I've just washed my face and got ready for bed and I was like, ah, I need to like contact with you all. So my food story. Um, when I was, gosh, I think I was looking back, I don't think I was really aware of my connections with food or any of that until when I was 10 I moved over to New Zealand from Australia uh, my parents were going through a rocky time and that's actually probably the age I became an emotional eater before then I think I kind of just ate to fuel to play sport and all those things um, but looking back now I can see that at the age of 10 I started emotionally eating I started just yeah, pigging out on food when things were tough, especially at night, and I just was really unhealthy, and I actually put a lot of weight on in a shorter period of time, which is not so great when you're like 10 and 11 to suddenly kind of get a bit overweight, um, and I've always been really tall, so it's just so much more obvious, and kids are mean, and they really just, they point it out, but the sad thing is that it now say that I think it is in one, two, um, of our children are actually overweight now. The, the statistics are really high on even childhood obesity now, especially in America. I think they're one and two, and New Zealand's like one and three. So it's something we've got to be really um, mindful of with our children too, um, that we've got to have healthy emotions around food to show our children how to have a healthy relationship around food. So this has actually been a massive driving force for me because I want my, my kids to enjoy good food and um, hi Roxy, and enjoy um, feeding their bodies well, feeding their bodies with fuel and not having those emotional connections with food. So yeah, once again, I was about 10, 11, I put on a lot of weight, I remember eating like cookie dough, like, did anyone else eat raw cookie dough as well when they were younger? Um, I would not do that now. So yeah, 10, 11, 12, I realized that I was yeah, everyone made it very uh, aware to me that I was overweight. Um, my nickname at school was Titanic, like kids were mean. And then I remember hitting into intermediate and in PE, did anyone else have to do those like beep tests and BMI things? And I remember the teacher out loud in front of everyone telling everyone that I was obese. I mean, at that stage I wasn't too bad, but yeah, still, I was probably about size 16, which probably was still overweight. And that actually spiraled me in with a few other things that happened into anorexia really, really quickly, which is a scary thing. I think it was within a six month period, I went from like a 16 to like a six. It was a scary period and I just got so controlling over calories. I and mean, then um, it was like no fat and it was calorie counting. It was really bad. And it was amazing as a young one, how you can quickly slide into that and not have much knowledge of what you're actually in damage you're doing to your body. Um, because with the anorexia, I think a lot of kids don't realize um, that it actually takes 20 years for your body to recover if you have gone into some severe anorexia. So I'm only actually coming out on the other end of that now. And I really would say that it's only now this last couple of years, I've actually, even this year, have a healthy relationship with food. So it's just a crazy journey of over a decade for me of this being this real roller coaster. So from the age of like 13 to 15, I was severely anorexic. I got hospitalized. I dropped down to about 40, I think it was about 46, 49 kg. Um, I'm five foot 10, so that bones were showing. It was just really, really bad. So I was seeing a nutritionist, but the thing is, yeah, I was counting those calories. And then I went into a stage where you actually, you can go from being obsessed with food and then you go obsessed into another area. So I went from that to actually being obsessed with running um, and sport and things because I wanted to keep those calorie levels down with burning them up with exercise. So I went into another extreme. And there's only so long you can hold those things. Like I say, everyone tries dieting and it doesn't work for them. 
like dieting all of you have probably tried I don't know give me a comment have you tried tons of different diets and they don't work for you because it's actually a have a bit of conversation with yourself and start loving yourself through some of these things um, because dieting and restricting ourselves with certain food as soon as we allow those foods back in we kind of go all out in them and that's what kind of happened to me with anorexia I, I deprived myself for so many years and as soon as I started allowing a little bit of it in I couldn't actually control myself so I went into the binge eating phase and that just makes you feel even more miserable um, I think all the ladies out there are i am say we've all experienced that. Has anyone else experienced a bit of like the binge eating thing? Where we just, you just kind of like, oh my gosh, the whole pack of the biscuits is gone. And that's not healthy. That's not having control with our food. And not actually letting these. Um, so that was for me. At 16, started the binge eating thing and binge drinking, which is just even worse. So my poor body got a hammering from like 16. Around the 18, 19, I was like, man my body's not doing so well um, I actually cut back the drinking which is a huge thing um, but still really unhealthy relationship with food you can go in all these different extremes um, so it wasn't to probably I had my first um, pregnancy at 20 and it was like the first time I in pregnancy is like I think I decided I wanted to feed my baby well so I started eating really well and it's actually the first time was kind of crazy so I didn't put much weight on during my pregnancy and after I had her I actually was lighter than before I had her but it was a different um, relationship with food I was having more mindful of what I was eating and fueling my body which is totally crazy and that's where a lot of us I think we miss that but I did slip back in afterwards um, still having that real sweet tooth because that sugar stuff is addictive eh? like it's totally crazy how addictive the sugar is can be and we just want more of it so what I was doing in my like 20s to 24s was oh I won't have um, a proper lunch I'll have a piece of cake instead and swapping thinking it was okay to swap the calories out but it was it's not um, with that it's not actually what we're eating it's actually the substance we're putting in us we need to be watching like what are we actually fueling our bodies with and how is it making us feel as I was saying last week how is what we're putting in our bodies does our body love that is it working well for us um, I had a lot of inflammation in my body has anyone else suffered with like those little dotty things on your arms like that's your body telling you that it's not happy it's not enjoying what you're feeding it so it's really been conscious of of those things I find that's been massive so the last couple of years has even just been more of a journey I think especially with my thyroid di diagnosis of what am I putting in is that you Roxy with the bumps yeah quite often um, the bumps on the arms is actually quite often the dairy thing um, I found it's um, and I've looked into it it can actually be a sign of a dairy intolerance but once again you just need to listen to your body and see how it's feeling with the food um, so once I have my thyroid I became even more aware of um, what I'm feeling myself and the funny thing is the more you start feeding yourself with really good food it's more that you want that good nutrition in your body and more aware but I think it's in our food food packages and I think that's super exciting super important if you want me to do another video on how to actually read labels just comment and let me know and I'm happy to do a video um, and I can pull in some packages and show you what you need to look at um, and show you how much the sugars in it and how much that actually translates into teaspoons um, and how much we should actually be having a day because some people don't realize in just one sitting with one thing they've actually blown the sugar content for a good couple of days um, so it's just totally crazy when you actually start learning how to read packets I was at the supermarket this afternoon trying to pick out just a, I just wanted I was like I'm not gonna buy a block of chocolate because I know I'll eat the whole thing even if it's dark so I was like I was gonna want to buy something small and I was, so I was reading all the back of the labels and a man came up to me and said you can't make your mind up can you I said, and I was like, oh no, I'm actually just reading the labels to see how much sugar is in these things. So I ended up coming walking away with like one of those Whitaker sticks. I was like, okay, that's got eight grams. That's kind of like on the limit, but that's okay. So eight grams is probably about a teaspoon and a half, which is totally crazy. So one teaspoon of sugar is about five grams. So you'd be quite interested when you read the back of some things, they've got like 20, 30, totally way over the limit that you're supposed to be having a day it's actually meant to be I think maximum nine teaspoons a day which is still massive um, and that's if you're living quite still an active lifestyle so if I told you a bit of my my food journey, 
on a journey with food. I just encourage you to kind of have a think about your food journey. Like where have you come from? What has your experiences been? And have you been aware of any of that over your lifetime um, to where you are today? And I'd love to hear that. Let me know. Say, hey, I'm just starting this journey on looking for food. Or yeah, I'm kind of halfway through this and want to know more. Or yeah, I'm totally where you're at, Ali. I'm totally I just really would love just to build this community of people that can help each other through this journey because it's a really big topic and I really think that it's really evolving and becoming more aware in society that we need to address some of these issues um, and I think mental health issues are totally linked to some of these things because we can tend to go to food for comfort as I said last week when we need to see food as fuel and have a healthy relationship with now I'd love to know, has anyone taken from last week's pointers remembering to eat slower and more mindfully and that's going to help boost your metabolism? So I'd love to hear if some of you guys tried that slower eating and how that's worked for you, being mindful of what you're eating, sitting, not standing while you're eating, taking some time to enjoy that food what you're putting in your body so it'd be awesome to hear if some of you tried those tips and how they're working for you um, and we'll get some of those tips up for you just through the week to remind yourself of them but so good to hear from you guys tonight does anyone have any questions I see a few of you are all on here live I'm just reading them through so just give me a minute yeah preparation is the key Roxy um, ready to go that's when you're gonna go to those for me I drink a lot of herbal tea so I'm constantly flicking the jug boiling the tea and drinking because quite often we're actually hungry um, we're thirsty dehydrated and not hungry and sometimes um, especially you do um, have like a peppermint tea or a cinnamon tea it's actually going to cut that sugar craving down as well but making sure you're fueling your body with enough protein too so don't let yourself you should never let yourself get starving you should be making sure you're fueling up correctly during the day because when you get to that really starving spot that's when you're going to throw the junk in but preparation is the main thing I always am making sure that when I go grocery shopping I'm not going to buy the things I know that I'm just going to totally go crazy with so for a while there I had to cut out buying chocolate because I knew that I'm going to eat the whole block so I just had to take some time um, to buy a bed it's going to keep me wired I'm not going to sleep well so I'm just really hungry or am I just wanting something we have so much options with herbal tea now and there's lots of healing properties in herbal teas um, but they really help so first thing in the morning I make sure I get a good lot of herbal tea down um, and that's actually really helpful but make sure you are having a good breakfast a good lunch and a good dinner and that should really help ideas for some meals um, jump onto the 10 day kickstarts and they give you some good snack ideas um, for meals but make sure you what I always do at the start of the week is do a whole lot of roast pumpkin I have them in the the fridge all week you can make some egg muffins out of that you can toss them in a salad lunch I think is the big thing I learned is that I've kind of I'll do the breakfast and then I kind of not worry about the lunch and then three o'clock you're like oh I'm so hungry I feel like well at dinner time and then you snack again so having um if you're not so much find that struggle with that lunch sometimes I'd have a, a late breakfast but have it good have um some eggs eggs is just amazingly super and handy to have on board but that's also super great for you to have and I mean shakes are a great option as well as long as just check them because some of the shake formula out there as I'll probably show you next week I'll get some and see if I can show you um, it can be full of sugar so just be mindful of what protein mixes you're, you're using because they can be yeah Roxy I'll put up a muffin egg muffin recipe to them I think they call them 70 eggs curried eggs my kids love those and they're super easy to do at the start of the week just do a dozen of eggs um, you boil them you cut them in half um, I've got a homemade res um, mayo recipe on my website um, on my Facebook I think there's one in there there's even a video um, you scoop out the middle you mash it all up and put them back in and it's such a and it's full of protein you can have them for lunch just such a great thing and for my kids I put a little um, toothpick in and I make a little flag out of paper and stick them in and they'll eat them then because they think it's a boat so it's amazing to make your kids eat something you just make it look fun and they will eat it um, yes Christine yeah get yourself some peppermint tea um, my personal favorite is actually peppermint um, white peppermint tea that's super yummy and um, there's a clipper brand that have that um, common sense sell it 
it's only a couple of dollars. White tea is um, much more higher in antioxidants for you. Super good for you. Then add the peppermint tea. The peppermint helps cut that sweet tooth craving and just great to calm your tummy. So peppermint tea is really great if you've got a bit of an upset tummy. Awesome guys, I love all the questions tonight and I look forward to hearing. I'll be back on Friday um, to give you some more stuff. We'll continue on this topic and we can do this together. See you guys, have a good night.